Welcome to our viewers in the United States and all around the world. It is Thursday, February 10th. I'm John Berman alongside Brianna Keeler. And we do begin with breaking news. Staff members at the White House residence discovered wads of printed paper in a clogged toilet and believed that former President Trump was trying to flush documents. That and other explosive revelations in a new book by CNN political analyst and New York Times Washington correspondent Maggie Haberman. We have been waiting with bated breath for this book. So this certainly adds a new dimension to Trump's indiscretions with White House documents. A source telling CNN the National Archives has asked the Justice Department to investigate how Trump handled White House records. It's also seeking a review of whether the ex-president violated the Presidential Records Act, including the handling of classified information. And Maggie Hamerman is with us now. She is also the author of Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump, and The Breaking of America. Maggie, we start with the toilet. Tell us what you learned. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, so as I was reporting out this book, um, I learned that staff in the White House residence would periodically find the, the toilet clogged. The engineer would have to come and, and fix it. And what the engineer would find would be wads of, you know, clumped up print, wet printed paper, um, you know, meaning it was not toilet paper. This was this was either notes or some other piece of paper that, you know, he they believed that he had thrown down the toilet. What it could be, Brianna could be anybody's guess. It could be post-its. It could be notes he wrote to himself. It could be other things. We don't know, but it certainly does add, as you said, another dimension to what we know about how he handled material in the White House. We have known for several years since my colleague Annie Carney broke the story that Trump was ripping up pieces of paper and that his staff was having to tape it back together for archival purposes. Uh, this is how he has handled documents and pieces of paper all his life in terms of ripping them up. But this was something this was something different and it was not, uh, as I was told, an isolated incident. Several times. Several times, Maggie? This was something that they would they would periodically find this to be the case. Uh, you know, the, the the exact number, John, I'm not certain of, mm -hmm. but uh, it was not just once. And his toilet, like no mistaking whose toilet it was. It was in the pipes. I mean, it was in the pipes, and uh, and th this was this was this was this was his bathroom. So yes. Uh, and I'm asking about these specifics again because we've heard again from Andy Carney's reporting, you know, for years now. He, he would tear things up. I mean, you tear things up, you know, you throw them Correct. around, you throw them on the floor. That's one thing. You walk them into a toilet and you flush them down. That seems to be another. It's definitely different. And again, John, I can't get in his head. I can't speak to what the motive was. I can't speak to why he did it. It's, I think, important to note, Jeffrey Tubin has talked a lot about this uh, over the course of the last day, that the motive on why, you know, somebody does this uh, in terms of records and uh, poor record keeping in the White House, that would become, you know, a focus if there is some kind of an investigation into how he handled material. As you say, it's been known for a very long time that he was not exactly, you know, necessarily tucking everything away. And certainly, you know, there have been issues with previous White Houses about about records keeping. Uh, but this was the, the first time I had heard something like this. Let's put it that way. He has the ability to declassify information. So yes. clearly this yep. is trying to hide information. And I think the reason that someone would do. Yeah, I don't, Brianna, I don't want I don't want to say okay, clearly. I don't want to say clearly. I don't no, know fair. what his motive is. All right. I understand right. you're not saying that, Maggie. Right. But this is highly unusual. Um, and this would have the effect of obscuring the information that was on those papers. I think it's important, Maggie, and obviously you know this, having covered Trump for so long, he has a habit of trying to hide information from everything from classifying stuff that shouldn't have been classified and hiding it. I mean, this is something that he has done over and over again. This is this is not somebody um, for whom tra you know transparency was not a premium in that White House, as as we know, and we talked about this many times over the course of four years. The lack of transparency, uh, again, whether his motive was to try to disappear something to make it go away, whether he was just standing there, he is you know he is he is an unusual person, and so I can't again can't get in his head as to why he was doing it, but certainly uh, it raised questions among staff. And again, it's just one more piece in this mosaic now, and we're learning mm -hmm. about it just now as you, for the first time, show us the cover of your upcoming butch, which, book, which we're very excited <laughs> about, Confidence Man. Again, Thank and it you. adds to this discussion of
classified items being found at Mar-a-Lago. It adds to the discussion of the January 6th committee being given papers that are torn mm -hmm. up and pieced together. Mm -hmm. Also, we're learning in this book, which we've been waiting for with bated breath, and there's the cover we're seeing just for the first time this morning, Maggie. Donald Trump is still in contact with Kim Jong-un. What's going on here? So, so he says, um, now again, uh, you know, what he, what he says and, and what's actually happening are not always in concert, um, John, but he has been telling people that he has maintained uh, some kind of a, a either correspondence or a discussion with Kim Jong-un. You know, I think it's not necessarily unusual uh, for a former president to maintain some kind of contact with, you know, other foreign leaders or former foreign leaders. This would obviously be unusual because this is the only one, uh, to my knowledge, that he is saying that he is still in touch with. And as we know, he had a fixation on this relationship. Those letters, uh, you know, from Kim Jong-un that The Washington Post, in, in terrific reporting, reported on the fact that he had taken with him to the White House the original copies. He would wave them around, as I understand. He would wave them around in the White House, and he would wave them around at Mar-a-Lago. He would have them in these boxes, and he would take them out and show them to people. Um, this was a relationship he He's got pictures on the wall of his office of, of Kim Jong-un. This is a relationship that, that was uh, very important to him, and it's pretty striking given who Kim Jong-un is. I, I do have a question of, about the photo on the cover, uh, Maggie. Tell us about that choice. Sure. So, Brianna, this is a book that is different than um, there's been a number of exceptional books about the Trump White House. This is not just a Trump White House book. This is a book about the former president, the arc of his life, beginning, uh, you know, in his life in New York City and how that world shaped him and then shaped the world that he created in the White House. And so the younger picture is to convey, A, that this is a different book, but also that this is something that, that is, is, you know, anchored in a, in a different period of time, at least in the beginning, and then goes through the White House years and to Florida uh, in the past year. Well, if... Uh Toilet gate or flush gate, I haven't decided which one I'm going with yet. If that's just the first revelation we are getting out of this book, I expect to learn many more things. Very much looking forward to it. Maggie Haberman, thank you so much for joining us this morning Thanks, with guys. this new bit of information. Fascinating bit of information here.